This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for watching. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have my co anchors with me, Ife Uluo Shinke and Ife Omai. What's good? Mm. Good morning. morning. How are you? I'm all good. How are you doing? Wow. Okay, so rapper J. Cole considers retiring from music while admitting his level of passion um, for performing. In an essay he wrote for The Player's Tribute, he said since the release of For Your Eyes Only album, he has been blessed with two sons and learned um, the delicate art of balance between parenthood and career. He added that his long-term plan was to become the best rapper he could possibly be um, before hanging up his jersey, leaving nothing on the table when all was said and done. Amazing stuff. Um J. Cole is one of those legendary rappers that came into the game and changed it all. Like, um, his style of music can be defined to be intellectual, like um, Kendrick Lamar, um, the likes of Nas, Nas and, and others, you know, mm. that are very prolific when it comes to lyricism. Mm. And um, you can't take that away from J. Cole. So mm. if he retires from music now, it would be a big loss to the hip hop community. So, mm. but we've seen a lot of um, rappers that say, he's, they're going to hang the jersey, but... Yeah, I don't still. think he's doing it anytime soon. He also said his passion is back and his... So he will. I think he's considering it for when it's time to move on to other things, but I don't think it's something that's happening yeah, now. He's working already, on an album that should drop this year, actually. Mm. Already he's so, on the yeah. path of um, moving on to other things, such as um, executive lead mm. producing mm. stuff, because he has a lot of people signed under his Dreamview record label. Mm. So right now we have the likes of Bars and the rest of them that are killing it, you know. He started from Top Dog, and um, right now he's still... I think he still has some affiliations with um, Top Dog and all that, so... I think it's really amazing. No, I said Top Dog. No, that's Kendrick Lamar. So I'm mixing them up now because mm. they are both great at what they're doing. So, mm. But um, talking about the part which is on now, which is signing all the rappers and making sure that they're good. And then he signs only very intellectual people. Mm. There was this Dream View album that they did. I think it dropped sometime last year. That was so... like one. That was one of the greatest albums for hip-hop heads mm. last year. And then, yeah, so... J. Cole, and then talking about family, you know, this is somebody that has been really tight-lipped about talking mm. about his family, mm. talking about his personal life, like people don't even know what's going on. But when he puts it in his music, you can relate, but you won't get the full gist. But right now, you know, coming out to spill it, it's more like we understand you more, brother. Mm. You get me? Like, it's <laughs> So it's like, yeah, so I really like this essay. I like um, when he talked about the balance between fatherhood and mm. career. I mean, when it comes to men, we, we never hear enough of it mm. i don't think the conversation even comes to the table most of the times because a lot is really not expected of, of them not because that is how it's supposed to be but because society have found a way to make it feel like the burden of bringing a child in and raising it has to rest on the mother so you see the woman struggling with balancing career and mm. motherhood but um, for men it it sounds new or refreshing when it's coming from a man telling you that he had to put things in place to ensure that um, he had that balance because a child was on the way so mm. I like that and I think um, he's also someone that when you look at his life you look at his personality and then you begin to encourage young men around you to look at someone in his shoes and see how he takes mm. family and his life seriously regardless of being one of the biggest artists um we know right now globally you know and you see um it was it not it was it peter of peace or somebody in nigeria's entertainment industry that was saying it is very difficult to be in the music business yeah. and also have a, a family have and be faithful to your wife and all mm. that and you see someone who is smashing this globally mm. and doing that comfortably you know much you, bigger yeah. than you mm. so sometimes when they want to make these excuses i'm not going to argue with your excuses or say they are not valid for you but don't use that as a benchmark or the standard because we see people doing it perfectly well and yeah. also um, winning awards and doing great in their chosen career as yeah. well yeah i like that i i, I what really stood out for me was how he had sacrificed a lot. I think growing up listening to his music, I always wondered why he didn't do as many collaborations with other people. 
And I'm glad he kind of like picked up on that because I can imagine for you, for the world not to even know their, his son's names, he's not interacting as much with people who want to know his son's names. You get what I mean? So I guess he's not in that business space mm. and he's not really doing the showbiz thing. So it's sacrificing quite a lot for the safety and privacy of his family. And for me, that's a really big deal for a man to be that concerned about his kids and things like that. I mean, even his wife. And so, yeah, we know her name, but she's also very much out of the spotlights. And I, something has to give, like I always mention, it's just interesting to see a man who is that vocal about... And um, that good looking as well. And that talented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of props to that. I like that you also brought up the low standard that a lot of people have. And society, yes, has put the put the pressure on women to 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 do this. But a lot of the times, it's also because the men, a lot of men, refuse to pick up the slack. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just have to do it ourselves or whatever. But there is a lot of good men. I just like, spe especially when these men um, decide to speak out. Mm -hmm. So you cannot really blame the society for not really talking about. True, men doing true. well if they don't see anything don't some people really it. just genuinely think it's my job so i'm not going to make a fuss a about it which is yeah. fine but mm -hmm. i think when it comes to the table and people actually want to mm. let us know how they're doing i think it's really encouraging for me to see men who are that articulate about themselves mm -hmm. and in a way kind of mentoring yeah. the others yeah. indirectly mm -hmm. so it's really cool yeah really cool Okay, moving on to the next story of poor conversation. Zoning has never and will never help the ordinary Nigerian. We are one and must begin to see ourselves as one for development, peace and progress to come forth. Elect qualified leaders hungry for improvements and support them in making changes. Let us leave unprofitable tribalism, sectorialism and sentiment um, in making decisions that affect our future. And this is coming from Nollywood actress um, Itinosa as she advises Nigerians. Um, I think this is a very um, tricky um, conversation, especially for Nigeria. I, I understand what she's saying, absolutely do. Um, mm. I get it. But <sighs> people want to feel among. They want to be part of the system. They want to see that um, they are not being sidelined or a whole tribe is not being um, forgotten when some certain decisions are being made. Can we also bring in professionalism and take away sentiment even while practicing quota system? I think that is possible. Okay, so when I read this, it's kind of like the same vibe. But I think she did a very smart um, wording to analyze, to, to, to focus on that type of backlash because she said profitable, mm -hmm. unprofitable tribalism. So there is space for profitable tribalism where you make sure that your people are taken care of, which is what I think you're trying to talk about, where you haven't forgotten the people, kind of like what Idris Elba and that girl did, where they've taken a specific tribe and trying to build that up. I think there's a space for that. But I like that she used that choice of word because that was my only criticism to her as well, that there is a space where, at the end of the day, Igbo people have to take care of Igbo people. And Yoruba people, there's a space for that. No, I don't think she's talking of just the taking care of right now. You know, of course, in Nigeria, there when we are getting to 2023 now, you begin to understand when people tell you um, the North have had their time it's time for us to get a president from the east or to get a president from the south i, I think now the conversation is saying he has to go to the east now because i mean we've had the um, huh? south and all that mm -hmm. that's the conversation and that's basically what the zoning thing is really about mm -hmm. so i'm saying even if we have to do that to ensure that the major tribes or the ones we want to mention i mean we have the north the south the south south the southeast even if we want to do that to ensure that everybody gets a taste of the the seeds, then it's important to also look at those that fit for that seed, mm. not because you came from the east or mm. because, and also this quota, quota system comes to play through when, when you go to the federal um, government colleges and when we had the quota system for how many people can actually be accepted into the school. So you ha you get to see, oh, mm. do we, can, we are taking, for example, 20 for this term, but um, 10 goes to the south, 10 goes to the east, and um, at some point, it got to the point where they began to reduce the level of cut-off mark for some certain people in some certain region because they feel like they are not reaching the cut-off mark. So that is taking away, bringing in sentiment, sentiment and taking away um, the value you bring to the table and your grades actually. So I think what she's talking about, like you said, is um, 
having that quota system, but also making sure it's profitable and not because he's Igbo. So even mm. if he is not qualified, he has to be our mm. president because he has yeah. to go to the Igbos. Yeah. I that, think that's that what I got of from word, That choice yeah. of word for me was really genius because it's. Uh, I thought you were going in that direction when you said mm -hmm. people like to feel among. I think there is some things that only your tribe people understand because cultures are different. So yeah. sometimes you need a, a voice to speak for you that understands what you're thinking. So in that sense, it's kind of profitable. It will be hard for me to follow someone who, let's say for a man, campaigning against menstrual pain or for it's not, I don't know, whatever. He can support and be a participant and really, but to lead that because you don't really understand the voice. I think mm. that's what I would say in regards to tri tribalism working sometimes. Um, but sentiment is another, another key word that comes into play. I think there's a lot of things that are delusional about our mentality and it's not a nigerian thing it's just a human thing so assume that commonality is good so just because we speak the same language doesn't always mean that this person is better and a better yeah. um, partner or like a better person so i think that sentiment is really deep rooted in us and it's like it it's is. like a, almost like a comfort thing that it's just easier for me to assume that this person that looks familiar is better but it's not really better so i like that she's bringing out heavy conversations like that coming from it you know so honestly i mean it's impressive i was very impressed <laughs> <laughs> all right so this takes me back to um i can't remember the Ghanaian actress who said that um there should be a law that whenever another leader gets in and she completes the project on the other's end of mm. what i said then was that we should get leaders that share a common vision a common goal so if we have such leaders, we wouldn't even have the issue of tribe or the quota system where we feel like it is time for this people, it's time for this people. It's just people that are ready to lead and improve the country. They share a common vision, a common goal. So I think there's some things that tribes shouldn't even come into play, such mm. as leadership. If it takes an Aousa man to lead this country, not one person but changing it and they share a common vision all well and good because if we're talking about oh it's time for the Igbo people it's time for then we would not actually have one common goal because mm. they want to do this for the east they want no, to i do get this what you're saying north. but i'm saying no. because every tribe mm. and every um, side of the country want to feel alone yes. and this is, no, no, if I'm, we want to be true federalist then you cannot take away the place for that quota system yeah, but for me you i know what even get, i actually that, disagree. that, that, that I think that's sometimes cool of, that's cool of thought exactly is the problem why mm. we would I don't be think that's a problem. no 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 i, I think i think it's part of the problem it, it won't be the sole problem but all them things it is it how it is be. executed as a problem, not understanding yeah, yeah. that how it is executed because, problem. like we said, we're not chosen people that are actually qualified. Are you we're telling me that there'll be nobody them. who has the same vision as from the east? I'm not saying that. That means you're not getting my point. My point is that we should have leaders that are just there for a same vision that want a common goal, mm. which is growth. So it don't matter where anyone is it from. Can, but it can also matter. That's just what I'm trying to uh, um, explain to you. Sometimes be, having a variety of people is not unintentional. It's a very specific thing that you do. So if like if I want to make a, a line now for clothes and say I want it to be inclusive, I'm not just going to wait and see if a big bodied model is going. I'm going to have to look for mm. a good model that's big size. Sorry to look cotton. for a good it's model. Just like when we are talking about creating um, the the, the system whereby you have 50 50 in terms of gender in a workplace it's intentional so it has to be intentional it has no to be. One, you no have to no you, one, ha you no have one. to consider nigeria and say listen there is good people in the country despite your 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 tribe or whatever but there is a good person that can lead nigeria from the east because we haven't had one from there if you're going to claim that we're all the same isn't it weird to you that all, the only good people that share the same vision are northerners or like from south, the south south, yeah. south. It, it can't be because what you're indirectly saying, and let's not let's not have that um tone to this because i know for me i've been able to have a weird experience with tribe because i'm Igbo and yoruba and i've noticed that there is a lot of things that come into history that people don't talk about and there is a skeptical mindset that we're not, we're not going to pretend that doesn't exist mm -hmm. that people are afraid or not wanting a leader from the east and that conversation needs to be had the ills mm -hmm. that have happened to the east needs to be had so that we can actually be able to find a way to get comfortable with the idea of an east 
a, a president from the east until we get there i don't think we'll feel all this the bottom line of all this is the fact that we keep recycling leaders we keep recycling the same set of people and then they they have a common goal they want to put their people nepotism is in play and all mm. of that so by the time we have those people changed maybe then the system may work but um, what what i'm saying is that there's a godfather for the east there's a godfather for the south south there's a godfather for the southeast there's mm. a godfather for the north so there is no way right now we're going to achieve this until we have leaders who share a common goal. So I think the recycling of leaders is even the bottom line of the problem. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so tea time continues right after this short break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dull, everybody feeling all right. Still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes I they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi. Like, sleeping early, sleeping early. Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Sheo Kuti weighs in on the ongoing NGDC probe with many questions for professionals in Nigeria. Um, so his questions range from why is anyone in Nigeria going to work today? What has to happen to the poor in this country before you professionals down your tools and say we're done helping you destroy our country and future? what has to happen in his caption he went on to say i'm sure the nddc is full of educates um educated highly skilled workers with their degree and phd but where is the sense mm. so we try to reach out to sheon kuti to join us to actually explain better but unfortunately we haven't been able to he's not picking this call so we keep trying mm -hmm. but before that i mean this is very interesting maybe i should bring the question to you yeah. professionals on this table what are you doing here mm -hmm. exactly he, why your work she, she is clearly a revolutionary mm -hmm. um you can you can smell it in his conversation and through history that has been the only thing that has changed any grand scale battle in a country or mishaps in a country mm -hmm. but it's not very common for everyone to be a revolutionist um, a lot of people don't have let me speak for myself <laughs> i don't have it i see it and i yeah like i support and everything but i know that i'm not built like that and i know exactly what he's calling out for and that's exactly what needs to happen to have change the most recent change that we've had in the continent of south africa with the apartheid thing that was like really drastic it didn't come from peaceful or whatever else. and living there for five years there's a lot of conversations in regards to the fact that mandela being in the prison didn't actually do the cook of the matter winning on ground causing havoc is what actually got people to say okay enough is enough let's actually fix something if we're going to complain about a system that we are in and perpetrating i don't see how change is going to happen mm -hmm. except drastic measures start to come to play but you're asking a very crippled people to fight even harder so, so it's hard to do it my question now will be how many revolutionaries do we need to get this done because in my head yeah i'm thinking like you said i'm on, i think i'm on your side on this one I, I'm, I'm not built that way but yeah um you know when um sega link was talking about activism and advocacy mm. i think i'm an advocate mm. i'm not an activist yeah, yeah. We'll cool. support the, yeah but yeah how many so these people if we decide to say we are not going to work and we're sitting at home how are we sure that the poor I mean, I like to see myself as poor as well. But anyway, let's just let's be real. So the poor as well. How, how are you sure that once you leave your work, they are not coming to replace you and it, we are back to the, mm. the same circle yeah, again? Because so I, I, I don't know how achievable this is. I get where he's coming from. And I think that we have too many bad eggs in position than the good ones. Because taking it back to the NDDC probe, I mean, everybody's pointing accusing fingers now. You did this, you did this, you got a contract, you did not get a contract. He told me to sign without mentioning his name and blah, blah, blah. But but if 
in that whole um what what do i call them now in the whole of ndc we have just one or two people that are corrupt i don't think we'll be where we are right now but it is a bunch of people because if it's one or two persons then it will be difficult for you to be able to pass mm. a bill or pass um, a, a finance or a budget that mm. you are not policing yeah, but i think you're minimizing the power of of un, 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 uniting with each other i think sometimes it's, Which is what I'm saying. Who are you uniting with when everybody is corrupt? It's not everybody that's <sighs> corrupt. It is not. Everybody I, in power, you, most of them are corrupt. It's not the problem bigger than it. Like, it's not going to be solvable. If you really want to... It's not, Nigeria's not the first place to have corruption. Nigeria's mm -hmm. not the first place to have a lot of corrupt leaders. Mm -hmm. And if you come together, it starts with one or two or three. And then it becomes a big thing. Look at the um, um, fees must fall campaign in South Africa. I started with three students and then it became a multinational. Like people in America were trying to um, join that. The point is that there's always, always good people amongst the bad. The, and bad people are just louder. If one person can start that and other people join, as little as, as, little as four people, you can maybe perpetrate something. I'll be advocating for so you guys when that happens. I think we do. People are just more comfortable with eating for the day and don't have a very futuristic... Um, point of view, which is what this guy is, is talking about, that you want to consume because you want to be able to buy food for your family now, but are you looking at what your children are going to is have in just the food? Future? If it's just food, then we won't have this level of corruption. I mean, they want to well, get things about who are that they don't corrupt, even though. need. No, I'm talking about people who are not corrupt. Okay. That, I think it's just food for them. First of all, um, it's human nature to be very selfish and um, look after ourselves regardless of what is going on around us. So you see a lot of people that... Um, they know this is wrong, but they know they're going to make a lot of gains. They know their family has to feed. They know this. So even the corruption now, it's not because a lot of them are bad. But like Elsie said, we have a bunch of corrupt people who are in control, who are in power, who are in, in charge of the resources that would go down to the other ones, right? So you, with your moral standard, will not feed so it's a food chain, and if the people at the top are very corrupt already, how is it going to so get to So you have to look the other way so, around. So you just have to turn a blind eye to it's not because well, yeah, that's look the, away. It's not because that's the correct thing to do, but because you're you thinking about your So you're future. saying that there's nobody in the NDC that does the The person should right come out thing. and start talking now. Well, she's tried. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> The person should come out and start talking because it feels like it was when um, President Muhammad said there is going to be a probe and everybody starts singing. Why weren't they singing before now? Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about NDDC of years. No, it's not, not an NDDC, now. really. Now, there's still an alleged ongoing case with um, the former EFCC boss. Now, that, that was a very strange one. It came, it came off as a shock to me because I'm like, these are people that have been catching four stars and they are being probed for. Do you understand? Like, that came as a big shock to me. But... If you now think about it, this guy has leaders, which is what I was talking about in the previous story, that they have godfathers everywhere. You understand? This leadership mm. thing is so crazy. So I get what Shane was saying, but how applicable is, is it? it to the common man? So the man who just wants to make sure that the, his children go to the best yeah, school. Yeah, until, until you stop having that myopic thinking until about we... tomorrow. Exactly, until we all stop having that. <laughs> Nothing is going to change. Like I said, you can't victimize So what's the first step of stopping to have this our myopic thinking? What's Stand the first step? Table. Let's and go our jobs. Us, <laughs> I mean, we need to get him on the next yeah. I, I hope we get him this yeah. afternoon And then people who are this. like the Wally Shrinkers, it's, it's been done before. We had Wally Shrinkers are really inspired. He has done country. it. He cannot always be the one I'm just getting saying, our I'm, turn. You know. Yes, it is. It is our turn. We don't really have. What do we do? We have Shorey. And in Shorey was locked up for how long? All because he used what word? The same word you, which he said we need revolutionary, right? Mm. He wanted to start a revolution, and, and this that is basically was the word from what came, she, and yeah. he said mm. he was. Um, what, what was it they called it again? What's the word now? Uh, um, uh, uh, the, uh, is it what when you? Treason. 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 Yeah, okay. thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so they said it was a treasonable offense mm -hmm. because right. the man used Treason. the word revolution. revolution. And she used it a lot. If mm -hmm. I, you know I love you. <laughs> but anyway, the point now is that I feel like we need Sheon to come in and have this conversation. Yeah. But I think that um, getting this done is what he's trying to say is systematic um, 
um, activism yes. and if which is why I was going back to the number of people in power that are actually corrupt mm. because we have more people in power corrupt than the people that are not corrupt because mm. if there are more people that are upright and saying we want to have a better country mm. I mean it would be easier for us for them to start blowing their own whistle even before a probe it's called mm -hmm. on, which is where I'm coming from. So anybody that is coming out to say anything or faint in any corner or stand in any way, hmm. I mean, you all are in the same pot of fish. Even if That's you want to, right now, if you want us to come and stand on the road and carry placard, make sure that something has been wired into my account and my children are good, oh, wow. then we'll do it. Okay. And that's... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching and please do send your opinions via WhatsApp to 0906005719 or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Remember you can catch up on this conversation and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Also watch Tea Time on Arrow TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my interesting co-anchors Ife Omai and Ife Oluo Oshunkeye and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name remains Elsie Godwin. Please don't change that down.